close. So is yeah. podcasting something that you would look at too? Uh, Can I just pull you in a little bit to that, Paul? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is my, my second one actually. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's a good way. I mean, in terms of exposure and if you can find a way that's enjoyable and I'm a bit selfish so I know that like sitting and speaking to you today I'm going to learn I'm going to have a great time but yeah. it's also good marketing yeah because you know guys like us probably don't want to spend much time doing that kind of stuff like LinkedIn posts social media like, I, I, it's not favorable for me so the idea of oh well I can get a conversation with a, someone like yourself yeah yeah no it works I mean I'm getting into the podcast you know and uh, it's uh, it's just switches your mind off doesn't it and you can listen to someone else and someone who's interesting hopefully <laughs> uh but you know i come from a discrete background and this this is this is new to me so this this whole marketing and things like that you know i'm trying to get myself out there and promote you know the good work i'm, I'm doing hopefully you'll find out yeah well that that was one of the things that was going to interest me today it's like you know you've, you've done this 35 year military background mm. most of which i'm assuming you can't discuss or, or perhaps at the time it was always top secret, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, 35 years in the military and 22 years with the special forces, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I talk a bit, but obviously, you know, it's continuing as I speak, you know, so uh, I don't want to jeopardize yeah, anything sure. on, the, on that side, but uh, I had a great time, roller coaster of a, of a career. You know, and uh, yeah. yeah, but I guess that mindset shift now to be the guy who now markets and exp almost kind of like can share what you've done, yeah, um, but still be discreet at the same time. It's quite a challenge, right? They're called polars. It's like, right, well, let's yeah. be discreet, but I need to let people know who I am, what I do. It's and I guess there's 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 merit in some of those stories that you can't share too. Like, I'm interested. Like, as soon as you go, I can't say, I'm like, fuck, now I want to know. <laughs> now you got to fucking tell me. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's, there's interest in behind it, isn't there? Yeah, no, there is. And people are really interested. You know, that there's, there's the bar stories and the, you know, life skills, which I've picked up and stuff. And, and now I'm trying to share my experiences. Um, but it's, from my side, I think it's really important. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there on the media. You know, people really, I would say, turn to the dark side and you know expose themselves fully about some of the stuff which we get up to whereas i'm trying to more keep my humility i'm a humor you know and uh and still express what i'm trying to deliver mm. you know in a, in a in a professional way um so yeah yeah what's your take then on these the military guys now that leave and and almost kind of like reach a, a level of of fame and stardom um, from TV shows, books. It seems yeah quite a common thing now. I think, I can't remember who the first guy to do it was, but I think Ant Middleton jumps out as a name, <laughs> doesn't he? Of like, yeah. because most people know who Ant Middleton is. I'm yeah. sure there's people before him, but yeah. he's kind of made a living, I guess, from his Yeah, well, good, good, good on them, you know, but um, I've got my line, you know, in the sand, which I'll, I'll step, step over. Or, or not, you know what I mean, within reason. So, and they've fully stepped into into that limelight and that, that's fine, you know, and making a, a life out of it. But you've got to be careful what, what we say and what we're, you know, from my background to, because things are happening today, you know, and last thing I want to do is jeopardize, you know, my colleagues. So, sure. you know, my, my heart is still obviously with with that unit and stuff. So. And I want to keep that intact. I want to keep my credibility intact. So um, that's a keen thing. Although I'm on this mic now talking, you know, mm. and trying to display what I'm, the skills I'm doing. But yeah. But surely you have to take that path too, because there's a life after. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I can see, like, because again, you, you'll be a good guy to speak to th about this, about life after serving for the military. Mm. So you do hear a lot of. Um, a lot of difficulty in guys adjusting. Yeah, yeah. And, and understandably so, right? Yeah. Like from, not only from a, a brotherhood community aspect, but a purpose and mission. Mm. Uh, and also financial, it's like, well, okay, you know, thanks for your service, see you later. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, this is well, a new life. I mean, 10% of veterans, they, they struggle on leaving, you know, after, you know, you've been indoctrinated in the whole military mindset and then mm. you step out into the big wide world and realize, Actually, but there's a second career there, you know, and uh, it's just good preparation and planning, I think. But sadly, people do struggle, you know, and they need that extra support. But the great skills that veterans have, you know, transferable skills into 
as I'm finding into the business world, you know, and, and, and some of the stuff I'm delivering is, is second to none. It's precious, precious mm. material, really, you know. Um, yeah. Do you feel like you're playing it the right way because you're you're kind of setting up this business, right, Excalibur? Yeah. yeah. Is it going to be a nice transition to you once the military kind of career is is, is done? Versus you just kind of like leaving the military and then go, oh, shit, what, what do I do with myself? Yeah, that, that, I mean, I've gone solo with the business, you know, a micro business as such. Um, it's not, not massive, but I've been planning that since, well, a good 10 years before I left the military. So it was already there. I was self-employed doing, you know, I picked up some great skills. I became a paramedic. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I really um, specialised and became a state registered paramedic, you know. So as well as my full-time job, I've got some amazing medical skills. Yeah. Uh, and I used them as a little testing ground, I suppose. I went out and um, used <coughs> that uh, and people loved it. You know, um, and I thought, what I've been learning in the battlefield, you can bring into the, I don't know, the streets of wherever you are. It's it's a similar concept, really. It's just converting it, you know. Mm. And I, I found that the audience loved it, so I just progressed in that. So I would say good preparation and planning is, I mean, what I've been doing throughout my life, really, mm. is preparation and planning. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Who, who does your message hit home to now? But Did you have a... Do you have any issues with like um, being able to relate to like what I would call normal, you know, the, the normal civilized people that like wouldn't understand perhaps what you do or, or anything? Is there any struggle for you there? Because from an outsider's point, I would look at it and say, well, how you know, how do I spend thirty five years in this disciplined, yeah. organized system, mm. you know, where you perform at your best and nothing else will do, and then I have to go into the everyday world where the standards are not the same? Yeah, well, I think that's the key thing. I mean, from from you know the regiment I was with, with is is um, the values and ethos I still take with me. They're they're ingrained in me. You know the unrelenting pursuit of excellence, mm. uh, humility, humour, higher standards of discipline, uh, rankless, uh, well classlessness, but not rankless. Right. Um, so I, I I take those with me and do the best I can. You know I've got my own motto, and that is to do the best I can with everything I've got. Although sometimes we've got limited resources. Sure. So we just got to do the best you can, you know. So I, I use that, what I've learned in the military, and, and step out into the second career, and it, 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 it's working, you know. Sure. Well, that's the great thing about effort, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's kind of like it doesn't matter what resources you have. It's like effort is something we can all apply. Do you think you could teach effort? Yeah, I mean, of course you can. I think you can. How do you uh, make a lazy person not lazy? <laughs> by motivating them, but you've got to empower them, I think, by influencing their behavior. You can't just expect someone just to, you know, it's going to happen. I think uh, you've got to go through a progressive set of steps, I suppose, and that's uh, listen to the person first, um, yeah. have an empathy, build a rapport, and then, you know, influence them, and hopefully you'll have a change of behavior, you know, mm. and sometimes it takes time. I think it always takes time, unless perhaps they're at a stage where they've reached a point. Because usually, we, you know, inside of our group, we say there's a fuck it moment. You know, when things become so bad, it's like, yeah. well, I can't mess about anymore. But yeah, yeah, motivating someone, I find motivating someone easy, but for long lasting change. I mean, we, I mean, mm. me and you both know that motivation mm. does not hang around all the time, no. right? There's, there's no. shit you have to do in your life. Yeah. And whether you're motivated or not, irrelevant, right? Yeah. Especially on operations like you do, it's like, that doesn't even come into it, right? Yeah. And this is something that's come up over the last four podcasts, actually. It's like, should guys now tap into how they feel more or should they should they start to distance themselves from how they feel and, and think mm. about actions? Because like I say, if you're on uh, operations, right, yeah. you don't go, I, I, I feel nervous, I can't do this, uh, boss can have the day off, I'm scared. Yeah. It's kind of like you learn how to override emotions and feelings, but you get the job done. And getting into good shape is similar, right? It's like, whether you feel like going gym... Sorry, it's part yeah. of the deal. And I think regardless of who we are and the extraordinary things, you know, I've managed to do, I still struggle. You know, the sure. stresses are still out there, you know, as we're all facing. It just, it's just hard sometimes. It's harder now I've left, to be honest, you know. Um, but I've got to, you know, having a good routine, a structure, uh, and just keep motivating yourself. But there comes a time, I think there's stigma attached, you know, a lot of things, um, you know, stigma we could, you yeah. know debate all day but mm. um especially from the background i came from you know putting your hand up could be seen as a sign of weakness but actually sometimes you do have to put your hand up and say look i am struggling you know and and 
having the moral courage to do that, especially in an alpha male maybe society or culture, it, it can be quite difficult. But uh, I did it, I've done it twice in my career and I'm, I'm glad I did. You know, and I had the support, I had an empathetic kind of boss who listened and supported me, you know. So even though we all have our times, you know what I mean, our ups and downs, and I think, yeah. Yeah, but do you think the difference there might be, so you're talking over 35 years, mm. right, you raised your hand twice, right, instead of yeah. this I think yeah. there's some people that, like, when you do that, and it's so rare, it, like, it kind of commands that yeah. the other person listen, because you're kind of like, oh, it's so rare yeah. that Paul would say that. So there's an element of that and there's an element where we can swing the other way, right? Where like, yeah. it's like if you're always complaining about how you feel, it's like it starts to become just words. And I think that's where you can lose empathy with people too. Yeah. Empathy empathy's a weird thing. It's like, you know, yeah. how much empathy is too much versus like, I'm sorry, this is the same problem you were having six months ago. What have you done? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's an argument in like uh, empathy, compassion, you know, if you use empathy, you'll get a lot more than others, you know, saying your, your thank yous and thanking people. Sure. But, yeah, there's, there, is a, there's, there is a time where you've got to go, you know, just get on with it. And I think we all build our resilience, you know, containers in different ways. We've yeah. all got different, and we need to build on them, you know, and, and shake things off, you know. The culture and the environment we're coming in, we're getting quite comfortable and complacent, I would say. We need to put ourselves out there, I think. Go out in the cold. Hmm. get a bit wet you know and, and face the elements and wake yourself up a little bit and there's nothing wrong with with that and but it, it's hard because the culture i think sometimes for, for the majority i'm speaking maybe are quite comfortable and happy to sit in and there's nothing wrong with binge watching a netflix you know what i mean but there comes a time where you know you need to sort yourself out and get out and have a routine, get the gym in the morning, you know, f get it cracked, find that window, do it, you know, keep physically active, mm -hmm. keep your mind active um, and and dust things off, you know. And yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Why though? Why, why must there come a time where people do that? Why? Yeah. So I'm in full support of what you've just said. Yeah. Cold showers. I do all this stuff because yeah. I know it keeps me mentally tough, sharp. Yeah. And my life is happier for for that yeah but I, I just there's a bit of a disconnect now between say let's say you got a uh, average guy 40 years old yeah. sat at home and he kind of like he might feel past his best physical best perhaps he's been in the same career for 20 years like why would that guy now seek discomfort over this is this is my life and it's okay well i think you answered your own own question there to be honest um it prolongs your life you know we know that exercise uh, physical exercise uh, will help you you know what i mean and also keeping your mind mentally fit it's going to prolong and prevent illness and things like that so i think doing these things and, and pushing yourself as well it, it it makes it you just said it makes you feel better you know the cold shower i'm not recommending cold shower, but if you want a cold shower yeah you know um yeah so yeah i think the difference there is though like i i kind of already know that i'll regret not pushing myself in life. I mm. guess what I'm saying is if you're at that age of 40, why would you seek the discomfort if you have settled for that being your life? Do you know what I mean? It, it's, it kind of it's interesting. Because, so I could have settled for just to stay in the, I mean, I came from the light infantry, was an infantry unit. I could just stay there, yeah. but I didn't. I volunteered and I went forward and I, I went for, you know, selection yeah. and I, I prepared for that. So I, I may put myself into very uncomfortable places and that grew my resiliency and it grew me as a person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and then I could have just sat, when I was in the regiment, I could have just sat there comfortable, busy as anything, you know what I mean? But I decided to go to the North and South Poles and volunteer for that. So again, I pushed myself out of, into a comfort zone, out of my comfort zone and into something more. Yeah, I think that's education. You know, I think mm. you've educated yourself that through all your years of hard work and discipline and training, you probably know that it shaped you and molded you. I don't think some men go through that, obviously not to the level you've been. I mean, you're, yeah. you're what, in the 0.1% of, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, okay, normal men, do they, do they even know the benefit of resilience if they haven't tested themselves, if they haven't gone and done those things? Because it's hard to sell something to somebody on a concept, yeah. but if you know, 
it works. Yes. I, I mean, that, and that, that's what I'm kind of saying. It, it, it does work, you know, pushing the boundary. I mean, I know quite a lot of people who've, who have regrets. You know, we're only on this planet for so long in our life journey. Yeah. You know, A, we want to stay as long as possible, hopefully, and live a you know, long and fruitful life. But you don't want to be on your, you know, dare I say it, on your deathbed saying all those regrets. Mm. I wish I did this. I wish I did that. Well, it's too late. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you've got to look after yourself. And one thing my old man, who sadly passed away when I came up from the South Pole, said to me every time I used to go in the military, you know, uh, look after number one, son. You know, and, and, and I actually I thought that was quite a selfish thing to say initially. But it, it resonates really quite a lot with me now is you've got to look after yourself so you can look after your team. And your team could be your family or, yeah. or your work. So I think that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. kind of how we do things as well. We say like, you know, me first, then us as in me and my, my partner or yeah. whatever, then then family, then community. And then like, if you're one of the lucky few, you can go on and kind of impact the world. But it always yeah. starts back there. It does. Um, and this was, this was a good contested debate as well. Um, mm. In my last podcast with a guy called Ross Slight, he was great, but he... He was kind of, I think, edging towards you do things for your community, and that's that's takes you out of your own kind of like self pity and stuff, which kind of yeah. makes sense. But I'm more of like you can only contribute with what you've got. Yeah. So it's like you can only offer love if you're with, like if you're capable if, of doing it yourself. If you love, I mean, yeah. it sounds wrong. If you love yourself, yeah, yeah. it sounds like yeah. bullshit cliche yeah. stuff. But it's kind of true. Like yeah. it's like respect as well like you start by respecting yourself don't yeah. you and then it's a trait that's within you that you can pass out yeah. on, onto others so it's like everything goes back to oh okay well what what are you doing yeah it does it comes back to you both mentally and physically and how you are you know but i get the bit about the community bit because sure. um you know volunteering you know, it's one of the steps for mental health yeah. you know is is volunteering and and what it gives you from that so i can i can relate to volunteering and giving time is Definitely. one of the biggest things so but you've got to look after yourself first cool that's what i mean yeah. it's like you have to be in a position to be able to do those great things because those things in life are they're amazing yeah to, to give back and to do things it's definitely when I feel at my best. If I'm ever feeling sorry for myself, or I've, I've almost kind of turned inwards a bit too much and everything's about me, that's the danger. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Poor old Alex, like, his shit. Yeah. And he's got the big problems. <laughs> <what I> mean. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> <laughs> well, some, it feels like that. Some, yeah. It, until I step outside my own head and realise, actually, my problems, people would fucking love to have them. Yeah. Like, what do I do with my business? Do yeah. you know what I mean? It's, bull it's absolute bullshit. Yeah. yeah, we're all fighting our own demons, but you sure. know, our negative thoughts are hitting us all the time. Mm. You know, and I, I think it's, I mean, I, I, it's saying to that demon, whatever you want to call it, you know, it could be Dave, fuck off, Dave. You know what I mean? And just fuck them off yeah. as such. Excuse my swearing there. But, um, you know, uh, and those negative thoughts can spiral and then prevent you from being your best. Mm. So it's 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 either distracting them, removing them, or thinking of a better place. Although we're being attacked by them all the time. You must be an expert at this, though. So you <laughs> must have all sorts of things creeping to your head, like prior to a mission, things yeah. like that. So this is what I'm traditionally not very good at. It's like a thought can really engulf me, and it can take over, and then all of a sudden that thought is real, yeah. and I live my life from that thought. Yeah. So you must be a good guy to speak to about like how to yeah shut these voices out and make sure the right voice comes through. Yeah, I mean it's like a I suppose it's like a train, you know, like you're coming into a train station and, and you jump on a train and you go in your compartment and there's a load of kids kicking off or, or adults or whatever, you know, being loud and noisy. You know, that's your negative thought, you know, kicking off and and, and do you sit there and do you take it or do you tell them to, you know, calm down and, and then you're embroiled maybe in an argument and stuff like that mm. or do you put your headphones off and, and possibly switch off or do you go into a different compartment or do you get off the train at the next stop mm. you know what I mean so yep. you have a number of choices but I, I would say be careful about fighting your negative just remove your negative thoughts you know and by what you're saying I think it, it, it sounds it's creating anxiety Sure, for yeah. sure. Ab absolutely. Right. I mean, it's a bit like this, like room today, right outside there. When I when I met <laughs> you and Mark, it's like it's too much, right? It's yeah. like there's there's what forty or fifty different voices going off at the same time. Yeah, as well as someone in a very interesting suit. Yeah, um, 
it's crazy and sometimes I think we're guilty of um, contributing to that ourselves so if we're at home for example we might have TV on music gossip uh, news social media we've got all this information coming into our head yeah and yeah. it's almost like we're living with yeah. that that noise inside of our own head I, exactly yeah it's a good analogy to have and we're being force fed you know a lot of doom and gloom I think you know you just plug put your TV on yeah and it's there isn't it you know yeah, it and is. it's telling you you put the radio on it's there it's telling you but actually we've got the ability to be in control and we can just switch it off you know what yeah. I mean and, and just remove ourselves and get out of that this is what I'm on about get out of that environment get some fresh air mm. have some exercise enjoy the nature I'm not on about you know doing any kind of crossfit stuff if necessary but just go out and walk the dog and you know remove yourself because your head can be cluttered with so much shit yeah it's you crazy know? we, we yeah. kind of know this we, we know yeah. it it's it's, there's no black art to this. It's no. it's just having the strength to do it, you know, mentally. What so what were the two occasions that that kind of made you have the courage to put your hand up and ask for help? Yeah, well, I mean, it's funny when you're pretty when you do some successful jobs, you know. And I, I was given some success, uh, some projects which I was pretty successful at, you know, and they were pretty ninja projects, really. And uh, but it it they gave me another one and uh, you know we're given these jobs and tasks and uh, it just became too much. I was doing too much and it was burning me out. And actually, it was a time when I I got out the shower actually. And when I mean this sounds wrong. When I'm in the shower, I have quite creative thoughts. I think about things. And same sure. with I'm running, exercising, and whatever. I I have creative thoughts. And I had this thought that uh, this is just ridiculous. I can't keep this going. It would lean to burnout, you know, and the problems of burnout. So I knew I had to do something. So I went in the next day and that's when I, you know, my boss was approachable. And I think that helps, you know, you have an approachable, empathetic boss. Sure. And he helped me. So, but it was just getting too much. Everything was, you know, and I'm used to do, dealing with a lot of stuff and juggling a lot of plates. But this was too much. You so know. what is what is the job of someone in a special military unit? So what is the difference between... Your standard army, uh, your SAS, yeah, and special military unit. Like, is that a ladder that you climb, or is that something that you identified as a as a as a, as a new recruit and said oh, that's where I want to go in ten years? Uh, it's interesting. So when I was a young, you know, I, I was doing well in the light infantry, you know, and and it, a guy came from 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 that unit and did a really good presentation, and he planted the seed in my mind right. and he, he had a good suntan you know and he had some great skills you know he, and I thought that's where I want to be but at the time I was comfortable you know he said about being comfortable sure. I was comfortable was I was happily married um, uh, some kids on the way and stuff and I thought I've got a career here why do I want to step into that and but sadly you know my, my uh, the, the marriage didn't kind of last um, no excuse but we married young and these things happen and uh that that was a very difficult time for me. Um, going through a divorce was a turning point, you know, a sliding door for me. Mm. I, I kind of had to put my defences up, um, fight for my children as well, and that was hard. Um, I didn't say I'd turn my back on the children, but I had to focus on myself, you know, and, and that was a turning point for me. I, I had very little. I was going up for the ranks of the, of the line infantry, but then I turned to alcohol as well and um to cope with the situation so i really kind of struggled dealing with that and we often turn to bad things when we're you know and and it was happening to me and i was seeing it but i wasn't realizing it you know i had um, reckless behavior discipline problems were coming and it wasn't until someone tapped me on the shoulder and said hey vic sort yourself out who did that I don't know to this day. You know, I was in the mess of the science mess and uh, had a few too many. And um, I, to this day, I'd like to shake that person's hand, mm. you know, because that was a turning point for me that I went up to my room, I'll be honest. And I sat there and I wept. And, uh, and I knew I had to do something and sort myself out. Funny thing is, the next day, I knew the direction. I had like a kind of moment of epiphany or whatever you want to call it that I know where I'm going. And that was it. And then I trained and prepared for going for for selection and you know the rest was kind of history well that's another great example isn't it of what mm. can come from some of what we call our dark or worst times yeah. it's like when we trace things back and you go yeah well i'm only in this good position because of the, the shit that i went through was that was that battle of divorce and separation 
Was that fiercer than any combat situation you've, you've been in? Any more difficult, any more challenging? Yeah, I mean, I, we're faced with a lot of negatives and that was a huge dark time of my life, I would say, and, and it is for you know, most people going through difficult times. But I had, it gave me strength as well to a kind of fear of failure, I suppose. Then it, it, it jettened, you know, it, it promoted me to a positive place so it gave me a huge strength as well that I didn't want to fail um, and to get through this and it motivated me he said about motivation well this motivated me to to go for this and do the best I could and prepare and that's what I did I, f I had the hunger I had the fight um, I mean on the start line of selection you know there was 154 guys you know some big iron men you know um, guys there you know the Arnold Schwarzeneggers I suppose you know from the, and but they all just started to fall by the wayside and and that gave, gave me a bit of strength to be honest and I'm only a you know look look at me I'm only a, a sm smallish guy um, but it's what's up in the mind and and having good preparation and training um, focused I was mm. physically fit as well you had to be fit of course but there's an element of luck but out of the 154 you know 12 guys passed and and I was lucky to be one of them. So, but I put my hand on my heart and I did the best I could. Yeah, but it's interesting, isn't it? To, to know how much of that darkness fueled that fire in you. So mm. I think back to some of my challenges. I mean, I've done nothing like you have, but when I've, when, I've, when I've had to really dig deep, it's almost sometimes the pain has fueled that for me. Mm. So I did a half a marathon through the Breckens uh, in just last month. Oh, well done. Uh, yeah, thank you. It was the fan yeah. dance. It was uh, the oh. 13 miler with oh, the good. rucksack. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, they they try and make it like serious as they can, but it's still good fun. Yeah. But I sprained my ankle, so I put duct tape around it and, and I shouldn't have done it, but there was a part of me that really loved doing it through through injury. Yeah. It's, it was a bit sick. Like, you know, people are going, that's not good, Al. <laughs> But I'm like, it, it, it was for my mental toughness. It was kind of what I needed at the time. Yeah. Like you say, when you see people dropping back, not that from an outside perspective, I, you know, I always want guys to thrive. But yeah. there's something within you when you see others dropping. Yeah. Your confidence goes up and your strength. Yeah. So it's, if you can reach that level, though, that's the thing. And that's the thing. Yeah. Isn't but it, it comes down to, I'm, I keep mentioning it, good preparation and training. Yeah. And it gives you confidence. Put yourself forward. You know, if you're going to do a half marathon, is do the I mean I did for my first goal mini goal for selection was to do run the London Marathon so I set myself a smarter goal which is to run the London Marathon uh, under 330 um, and I did all the reading runners world got the right trainers nice. uh, they delayed me for six months by the, I was in, in Bosnia at the time and they delayed me but that delay I saw it as a positive more preparation and training so when I was in Bosnia I was like Forrest Gump you know and I was running around yeah. and that's all I was doing run 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 uh, and I I then finished Bosnia I then was on the start line of the London Marathon uh, I put myself in group the 315 group uh, and they were saying I have this sticker saying 315 you know and uh, no no 330 and right. they say no you should be in the 330 group and I went no I know I need to be here and thank God I did because I came in I think 327. Nice, brilliant. Um, and I was, and that gave me confidence though. Yeah. And and then I did further little runs, and it just, you know, I was reaching the times I was setting myself that I needed to be, and it gave me confidence throughout. Sure. So well, I think you've just touched on a really good point there. I mean, you know, we can sit and debate why should a man set goals. It's like, well, there you go. You know, that character that you've got, that confidence. Mm. I think people feel. I think people get this the wrong way around. They feel like they need the confidence before they go and do the goal. And it's like, no, no, no. You'll get the confidence from doing the work yeah. that allows you to cross the line. It's the journey sometimes yeah. on the training and preparation. Yeah. That, that's the hardship. Sure. You know, often it's not when you get to the start line, it's already that you, you need to be in that right place mentally, physically and stuff. But sometimes it becomes a, not a doddle, but you yeah. know you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And some more of this victories coming, I'm not in a good mindset too. You know when everything goes well, like you do learn about yourself, but mm. you know when things don't go to plan. Yeah. Like I'm like, I, I think I've learned some of my best lessons then. Yeah, but for a while, I've written a book, and I planned yeah. it. Plan D. Plan D. Exactly. And that, that's that's all about when things don't go to plan in the North Pole. You know, yeah. we were, and things out of our control, and we worry about things that are out of our control. You know, and it was the climate. You know, the 
the Arctic Ocean was cracking around us. The Russians, who are our logistics company, they were telling us a pack of lies half the time and wanted more money, and we didn't know whether to believe them or what. So, and then that created anxiety amongst the team and, uh, yeah, difficulties. So, you know, they say a good adage in the military, you know, no plan survives contact, but yeah. at least have a plan. Yeah, you know? yeah sure. And, and you need a good plan, you yeah. know what I mean? And when faced with the enemy, you have to work around it. And that's that's what happened. Yeah, I kind of say similar to my guys. Like, you know what? I don't even say you need a good plan. I just say you need a plan because yeah. it's better to have a shit plan than no plan because yeah. a shit plan you can evolve and eventually it can become a good plan, right? Exactly. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of what, what was another interest of me to, to you. It was like mm. plan D. I was like, well, that's cool because I think that's something that we all need educating on that like, Plan A, yeah, like commit, go for it, but it's not likely to happen. So I'm really interested in the setbacks yeah. and the struggle. Yeah, because I think that's what relates to us all. That's the common denominator. So you don't see anyone that's had success without obstacles, setbacks, yeah. struggles. And I just think there's this misconception that they won't be there in your journey. And if it does, oh, I'm done, I'm finished, I can't handle it. And you go back to who you were before you started your goal. And I'm like, you can't do that. Yeah, you've got to put yourself in the arena, I think, you know, and, sure. and you get struck down. I mean, if you if you fail, you fail. You pick yourself back up, don't you, you know, and, and move on and learn from those experiences, you know, and it makes you, you know, that, that stress content I was on about, those failures and successes create your resiliency and your, your stress kind of container and ability to deal with the next, you know, whatever you're going to put yourself into, you know. Sure. But I think what you did, you you know, you joined the forces. So yeah. they're the ones that kind of pick you up by the scruff of your neck when you're down and say, no, 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 you ain't fucking done. Yeah. Carry on. And I'm like, well, okay, well, where where can we do that for guys now? So maybe it's the gym, you know, like yeah. that, that really helped me. It, yeah. You know, I was 11 stone. I'm just shy of 14 now. I had to work so hard. Yeah. But it taught me resilience. It taught me confidence. It taught me hard work. Consistency. Yeah. So I think you have to find something. It doesn't have to be special forces, no. of course. Because no. not everyone's uh, going to be uh, there or wanting or willing or able. But I think you have to find something that says, this is my this is my university. This is my education. Yeah. The gym's going to teach me about yeah. myself. And, and you might not enjoy some of those things. It might make you feel uncomfortable. Um, you might, you know, it make you feel pretty horrible but actually it's like the hills you know the hills going for selection you know um i kind of in a in a sick way love the hills you know and yeah exactly I don't. Uh, and that and but you've got to embrace it and uh kind of enjoy it i knew it's part of the only way you're going to train for the hills is to get on the hills yeah. and i train in every weathers and i put myself out there to the point that i nearly went down actually one on one occasion i had to go in the wood line because i felt hypothermic and I had to get my make a brew uh, and get myself warm pick myself back up but I knew once again building confidence that when I was on the start line of selection that I've trained in every single weather here yeah I've trained with my compass in the mist in the fog in the shit con I haven't sat down in my room and yeah. watched Netflix I've actually gone out there and I've built my you know um confidence but that's what I mean but that's where yeah. it's come from yeah that's, that savage work rate that you've got and that, yeah. that willingness to be uncomfortable is now the reason you're a confident man. Yeah, but it's not easy. You know, no, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm not out. Saying, no, it's not easy it's for not any. It's not a message we should be passing anyway. No. I think there's too much airy fairy positive information out there. I'm like, it's fucking hard. Yeah. But it's hard. So you can either complain that it's hard or you can yeah. jump into the toughness of the battle. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm out now, you know, as such, and uh, but I, I still get up in the morning. I've got to force myself up to get to the gym for half past six. Right, cool. Let's talk about this because yeah. the amount of guys that say I don't feel like getting out of bed, I'm like, nor do yeah. I, and you never will. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how do you how do you drag yourself out of bed it, when your alarm goes off and it's you know it's, it's warm in the it's really tough. Isn't yeah, it? it's tough. Let's be honest. Let's yeah. talk about it. You know, the hardest thing is probably tying your laces up yeah. to go to the gym and then shake you know the sleep yeah. from your eyes, but. Once you're there, how do you feel afterwards? Yeah. You're buzzing, aren't you? Yeah. You know, so, it, and it sets you up for the rest of the day. That, that's why I do it, because I, I, it gives me my, my routine. Yeah. You know? So one thing I've done is kind of accept that it's going to be hard. That I know that sounds really simple, yeah. but hoping that I'll wake up feeling like getting out of bed, for me, uh, yeah, you've yeah. already lost. That ain't going to happen. Yeah. So I, I know now, and I've, I haven't hit snooze for years, but it's still goddamn hard. Yeah. Every day. So I kind of know that. 
The other rule I have is I don't negotiate. So I don't allow myself to lie there and think, shall I have t- more 10 more minutes? Yeah. Because that voice will win. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And so, I, I think I think the night before as well is have your sports kit out ready. Yeah, ready to go. It's all ready to go yeah, yeah. in your mind. Right, I've got to get up. I've, I'm going to do this. And you've got to do it. I mean, I, I could eat quite easily. We could all just snooze and lie in and go, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But how does it make you feel? Definitely. And there's something in what you've just said about getting your kit out and stuff. So for today, for example, I was here at 6 a.m. I had your notes laid out on the table. Like yeah. I put them out last night with your book yeah. and my computer. Do you know what I mean? I was just kind of, and it created a bit of excitement before I went to bed. So I'm like, I've yeah. got something to get up for. I think if you're somebody who can't get, get out of bed, I think there might be something deeper to have a look at. Of like, well, what is it that you don't want to get? What are you avoiding by yeah. not getting out of bed? Yeah. And that's a tough thing to look at. It, it might is. be your job. Yeah. It might be your relationship. It, it could be that. I know that when I was working at tex, uh, Tesco and AXA Insurance, fuck yeah. man, getting out of bed to face the day was, oh my God, it was unquestionably just the hardest bit. Yeah. It was horrendous. Like, yeah. I was, yeah, I was nearly crying. Wow. Every day. Yeah, because you just know your day sucks. Yeah. You know, and, and you forget that you've got the ability to change it. But I think, I mean, you've got to try and enjoy things as well, you know, and, and, and Obviously, you're in a job which you probably didn't enjoy, like they say. Sure, yeah. Do you have a problem with enjoyment and fun? Be- being someone from like a disciplined background, because this is something I need to get better at, like to let my hair down and maybe my routines control me sometimes, my yeah. disciplinarian ways. I'm very regimented. And if things get in the way of that, sometimes I struggle to cope. Yeah, I, I think you've hit on two things there. You know, A, routine is important. Um, you need your routine, but you've got to vary your routine as well. Mm. You know, for for me, walking south and north poles, you know, if you didn't have routine, you, I would never have made it to the to the poles. You know yeah. what I mean? So you need that set rigid routine, which is monotonous. It's like the white treadmill. You know what I mean? But every step, all that routine, tent routine, ski routine, got us to the goal. And I think we can take that in life. You know. Routine is there for a reason. It's a coping strategy. Mm. But there comes a time, you know, weekends, you want to vary it up a bit, don't you? Or vary your meals at least, you know. Uh, have those breaks. Go away on holidays, you know. It's really, really important, you know. I'd agree and disagree on the weekend thing. Okay. But but I'm always thinking from, like, yeah. a getting in shape point of view. That's yeah. where my... So uh, you can imagine... Oh, no, I still keep fit. I'm still... Yeah. I go for a run um, or I might go on my bike or... I'll sure. do something. Yeah, but yeah. I'll, I'll just change it a little bit. Yeah. I'll be a bit more relaxed. I won't be up at yeah. six, put it that way. Yeah, yeah. And, and do you know what? You know. Not, not on a Sunday, I yeah. kind of allow myself the same rule. Like, yeah. if you want to get up, get up. If you, the alarm doesn't go on and that's my day. Um, obviously, what I come into to, to issue with with a lot of the new guys, especially, is Monday to Friday is like healthy living, and then out of routine yeah. in their head, instantly it doesn't mean well still eat healthy but have different foods. It means I'll eat shit or, or I'll yeah. slob around. So I always find that sometimes, and my martial arts instructor Matty taught me this at first. He said, "Look, if you're going to break the rules, the first thing you need to do is learn them." Hmm. so we're going to learn them and we're going to play the game properly all the time yeah. you're going to have your hands like this and you're going to have your feet perfect yeah. and only when you're an expert at that can you start to be the Floyd Mayweather yeah. you know yeah. I mean? yeah. and learn I find the basics. About routine. Yeah. learn the basics Yeah. that kind of thing so you'll kind of know what you can get away with a bit more you'll know yeah. but I think at the, at the start especially it's important well the most important thing at the start Paul I've found is you've got to do what you said you would do yeah, and, he, and and if that's getting up at 10 a.m., that's fine, or 6 a.m. But if you don't do the things you say, you you will lose all trust, you will lose all respect, and then that will be a blueprint for how you yeah. uh, how you live your life. And in yourself, you let yourself sure. down. You feel like you've let yourself down, and then things, you know. To be honest, you know, as you get older, things get harder. Yeah, you know, and and yeah. you know, you know, I like, I like skiing, and I'm a bit more bit more fearful i would say as i've got older about you know all oh, that hurts if i've fallen now you know and um but we've got to fight through our comfort zone and get out still get out there and do it but one thing you mentioned just going back a little bit was was happiness you know and i, I think we could have all the money in the world you know that, that that adage but i think if you asked anyone what what is your number one number two number three priorities maybe surely happiness your health happiness is up there on the, on the top you know, what marks. the fuck is happiness though well it's being happy with yourself and and i i think yeah it's a good question I mean, <laughs> you know. 35 years of you know demanding work like you did you could you could 
really dig deep on that and go, well, is, is that is that happiness or is that fulfillment, reward, dedicated? Yeah. You know, is that what makes our life worth living? I think it, it mixes in really. You, as long as you can put your hand on your heart and say, I've done the best I can. Yeah, that makes you happy, doesn't it? It makes you feel happy. I think that it certainly would fill me with pride. Yeah, yeah. Pride, Again, it's hard happiness. to separate. Yeah, it's hard to. You know, these are words, aren't they? So we could yeah. pride, we could define happiness. But I know that I'm I'm okay with myself or I feel better about myself when I'm doing hard work. Yeah. It's like when you go to the gym, isn't it? You know, you have a good hard workout, sweat oh that was a good how do you feel? Rather than you go in there half hearted, don't do a good one. How do you feel when you come back out? Yes. You feel a bit oh, that wasn't Absolutely. You know, so, and there's a lot of good data out there that talks about reward systems. Mm. And lying and watching TV, although it might seem really appealing, you don't get the reward. You don't get recovery, rest, or reward. No. So that makes sense to me. So it's like yeah. I can again when you when you become aware of these things, like you do, like mm. with the, when the alarm goes off in the morning, you you already know that afterwards you're going to feel good. Yeah. So, like, if you can learn that and go after the hard work, I'm going to feel so much better about myself. Yeah. I've proved so much myself. Because we all admire hard workers. Yeah. And there's another trick in that. It's like, look around at who you admire. Yeah. So, I admire guys like yourself. I'm like, well, what is it about those people that you mm. admire? And it's Thanks. full of that discipline and courage. Courage is a big one for me. Yeah. Because I went to sign up when I was 16 and I fucking bottled it. And I look back now as a 38-year-old oh, because I was just a terrified little kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, the army can save me here. And I think they, I think it would have been a great thing to do. And yeah. talk about regrets. I look back and I go, Alex, yeah. you should have, you should have uh, just, just gone for it. And I didn't. I, I think we've all got some form of regrets in our I'll lives, do. you know. Yeah. And, and we're just going to need to take strength from that and stock and move on. And that, you know, there's, there, I, I'm a strong believer that there's reasons why things happen you know, uh, in our lives, you know, why you meet someone or something happens and it creates maybe opportunity or things don't work out, you know? So don't beat yourself up. No, I don't. You know? But when I, like I say, when I'm fascinated to sit and speak to you, I kind yeah. of look at well, what, what's Paul done or what qualities do you display? Mm. And, and I do this in a healthy way, not like, oh, Paul's got this and I haven't. It's more like, yeah. okay, well, I really admire that this guy has got courage and discipline. Mm. So I kind of like, well, look, I look at my own life then and go, well, where am I displaying that for one? Because that, that's good to notice. But two, where can I be more courageous? Yeah. Where can I be more disciplined? Because you kind of like what you did, and again, I'm sure it's very different if I know knew the reality of your job, but it's kind of ticks all boxes for me. You know, you've got the adventure, you've got you've got the test of nerve, you've got the discipline. Yeah. You do something that very very few people to do. Even that secretive thing is really appealing. Hmm. It's like I love the fact that you can't go shouting about it. it makes it even more interesting. <laughs> it makes you more interesting as a character as well because yeah. it's like this shit you'll never know about yeah. you. Yeah, and I find that fascinating. I find that really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's my makeup, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, 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 but thanks thanks for that. You no, know? I mean it, um, yeah, I mean it all. But, you know, it's not, you're totally right. We shouldn't look at people in a materialistic and go, God, they've got everything, you know. I mean, I, I do some training and I had one guy and there was a millionaire and we went through the stress, looking at stress, and his biggest stress was money, Yeah. you know. So he's worried and he's a millionaire. You sure. think, so let's not look at the materialistic. It's, it's the attributes i think of people we can take strength from you know those key figures we've all got them um those heroes or whoever in our lives or what you read about what they've done you know those attributes should give us strength and go wow why you know and, and that's where i'd like to be or what i want a bit of that how do i do it yeah it makes sense the yeah. thing with money is it, you know it can be your motivation i get it i can see why yeah. people are motivated by money but the problem is once you get it you become so fearful that you're going to lose the thing that motivated Maybe you. Maybe that's what it was, yeah. Yeah, I think people do. They grab onto it because yeah. it's defined, you know, they are known to be a success because they're a millionaire. Yeah. So if they're not a millionaire, what are they? They're a fucking failure. Yeah. Whereas those yeah. inner attributes that you spoke of, no one can take them away from no. you. If you've got self-respect, courage, like no matter what happens or the outcome, I'm all right with who I am. And I think that's, that's what happens where I've got these, the values and ethos of the regiment is, is deep ingrained in me. Yeah. You know, and that's why I think organizations can be so successful if people live and breathe those, those values. We talk about values, but you can write them on the board, but it doesn't mean anything to people, you know, in organizations, yeah, whatever, integrity, yeah, yeah. But actually learning, learning them, what they're about, and part of the indoctrination or, or learning about them was the selection process. And, and then I joined my squadron, 
and each squadron has got their own culture as well. So you have these subcultures within a whole culture, uh, and then you start to learn and understand. And if you're with people, like-minded people, mm. it creates great strength as well, you know, and, and a huge bond, team bond, and it breeds success, you know, majority of success, success you know, um, yeah. Yeah, I think you've raised a great point about uh, being able to live your values and not just write them down and say them. They're very, very different things, especially yeah. in a company. Because if you think a company might have a thousand members of staff and they've got their values on the wall, it's like it, it seems to mean less than like taking them, ripping them down, and then seeing how they actually live yeah. inside of you. Yeah. Um, and this is something we speak about about going behavioural. So if you're, if you want to be a disciplined man, I'm like, okay, cool. But like, what goal can we now set that requires you to be? of a certain discipline mm. and this is why i always refer back to health first i'm huge, no matter what you're doing i think you should get your, your physical health on point and your energy yeah because i'm like there's your blueprint for how you approach everything in life it yeah. like teaches you all the good things yeah. you need to know yeah it is i mean you can watch things and hear read about things you know the japanese are out there doing exercise you know their tai chi in the morning they live long prosperous life why yeah. Because they're keeping themselves physically active, they're eating healthily, yeah. you know, they're, they're looking after themselves. Uh, and, you know, I think here it's like, what, five pieces of fruit a day, five a day? Yeah. Whereas over there it's like nine a day. But oh. either way, it's, we've got to look after ourselves. And I think five is like minimum, you know. So we really do need to look after ourselves. And, and you go in a service station, for example, where is everyone congregating? You know, it's in the cheapest place to get food, but it's pretty bad food yeah. whereas the good place has got hardly anyone but it's obviously it's more expensive uh, yeah well yeah. Uh, anyway. nothing's cheap there but no you're right yeah. it's a huge cultural shift but i don't think we particularly want that i don't think most people want that no it's too inconvenient well that's the thing <laughs> so, yeah so it's convenience of isn't it and it, our, our culture and our environment is creating this the easy option dare i say it it's funny my, my ex-wife um, said, oh, you always take the easy option. And I just thought, if only you knew. And she didn't know, you know, that I, I ventured off into where I ventured off. Yeah. And I just thought, you haven't got a clue. No, I wouldn't th think you're an easy route. With no, <laughs> if you I, mentioned I, in the same uh, sentence. No, I, I always, you? you know, I've always taken the hard hard option, really. Yeah. Or mostly, you know. But Don't get it, me wrong, I, I do go to the the fast food joints. Oh, you, mate, I hey, like a pizza yeah, versus egg person. Exactly. But I think overall, I know what Within you're moderation. saying. Yeah, sure. But it's yeah. interesting how we can divert our eyes to like a country yeah. like Japan and we can see people living long lives and we don't steal any of that information that's no. right in front. Do you know what I mean? And even on a, on a more local basis, you can have a look around and go, okay, that guy's in good shape. He's doing well. He seems, you know, like he's got his shit together. That guy doesn't. Yeah. I'm like, the answers are everywhere, man. Like, yeah. You can easily model. The good thing about physical health is like, the secrets are out. Like, th there's no yeah. secrets. No. Like, it's not a do, black this, art. do this, this, and this, and you will be healthier. Yeah. And now, yeah. in terms of success or whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can pretty much get a blueprint now of like, if you do these things consistently over a period of time, your life will be drastically better. Yeah. So I guess it goes back to that thing of like, what are you willing to do? What do you want? Why would you change? That's it. <laughs> Well, look, if you've got kids, I don't think you need to have that conversation. Like, you're yeah. literally teaching them what to do with your actions. So exactly. I'm like, yeah, you I, can I, take that. It's interesting because, um, you know, what do I teach my kids now? And I think it's, uh, my motto is do the best I can. And all, all I say to my kids is just do the best you can. That's all we want, you yeah. know. And, and, and kids really struggle, you know. They're put under huge pressures. You know, my, my son is 10 at the moment. Uh, and he's really struggling, you know, not struggling, but... You know, you're getting a lot of pressure from the teacher, all the homework, and he's not. And I said, let's do it. Look, just do the best. You, put your hand on your heart. Do the best you can. That's all we can ask for. Yeah. And I think having that, obviously, keep a track on him. And, yeah, of course. And, and, you know, promote him to do his homework and everything. But, yeah, but they're, they're putting a huge pressure. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, it's a tough one. So if your boy comes to you now and says, uh, Dad, I want to join, join the army, I want to be in the special mm. military unit are you full of support or are you like well that's cool some but Joe, you know what there's a few things you need to know yeah obviously I, I i would never push anyone into they've got to i mean i knew from my childhood exactly where i was going i think it was in my genes it was it was already there and i think if we look back in my history it, it's it was there and at okay. the age of 16 as soon as i could i joined signed the dotted line 22 years signed up and i was that was me but i wouldn't force anyone 
to join the military. It's got to be in themselves. So if, but if my son said to me, hey, I'd like to join the army like you did, Dad, and I, I would sit down and have a chat, I think, and just lay things out. But you've got to, you know, as we've just spoken about, a lot of hard work to, to get, and a lot of, you know, there's a lot of risk out there as well, you know, so I'd be worried about him. Of course. Uh, as well, but... You, so it was your father in the military too? Well, my father was in the RAF actually, but right, yeah. I, you know, it, until I look back in my history, you know, I've got, it's funny, you know, I, I, I used to wear these, I suppose, little kids, I suppose, army uniforms, I had a little plastic water bottle, mm -hmm. you know, I'd go out into the long grass, I'd have this plastic compass, didn't know how to use it, but I thought I was some explorer, you know, and, and also a soldier, you know, and I've had this plastic machine gun. It sounds corny, but as a young boy, but that, it was already there inside me. It, it, it was there without me even knowing. And look back now, who am I? You know, I'm a soldier, kind of adventurer. Yeah. That type of, you know, done some expeditions and stuff, and it's, it, it was already there. Yeah, and I think that's in a lot of boys. Like, it's weird how young lads get this, just like this, just thing of picking up sticks and turning them into guns and stuff. Mm. They learn, and you're like well, where, where did they learn this shit it seems yeah. to be like within them that they and my know daughter you know she she just likes all the pink things yeah. and all the you know where, where's it i mean my wife we're not pink at all you know not, 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 nothing wrong with that but yeah. where did she pick this up from yeah. you know and uh yeah before kind of even went to school as such so yeah bizarre. well that's what i think is a little bit concerning now that like it's almost trying to take that boisterous kind of attitude out of young men and young lads it's like i think it's pretty normal yeah to be a bit rough and tumble to pretend to go and shoot things to to want to destroy things it's yeah and of course it needs channeling of course it does but i don't think uh trying to remove that and pretend no. that it doesn't exist in in men and boys is is it, the right thing to it's, do it's naturally there yeah and it seems a bit corny me talking about you know putting an army uniform as a boy but it was it's naturally what i wanted and i think it's in most of us you know I, I agree, and this is why I think people find it hard if they you know, wake up and they're you know selling insurance for a living, and they're like, "But when I was a kid, I used to want to mm. dream about exploring the world, and how did I end up in front of this computer from nine to five? But there's a reason, you know, that why that's happened or whatever, you know, that pathway. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's what I mean. Is it like yeah. is it is it dragged out of us? Like, because I was brought up in a very safe home where it was, um, you know. If we could pay the mortgage, mm. it was a good month. Mm. So your values as a, as a young child become just do what it takes, get a job yeah. that offers you. Because back in the day, you used to have jobs with security. Yeah. You know, and like Tesco was a job for life. Yeah. And it would pay the bills. You wouldn't have a fancy lifestyle, but at least you could pay your mortgage. And that at the time was a victory. It's a huge win. Yeah. It's just because of the environment I was brought up in. So the idea of thriving even now the idea of making shitloads of money just doesn't really enter my mind because it's never no. been uh, it's never been installed in me and as much as i try it's just <laughs> yeah, it's just not gonna happen I, I value other things now yeah I'm, I'm a bit the same to be honest i could have stepped out and gone into a, a fully played maybe security job but I'm, i've decided to go solo set my own business I'm, I'm not earning big bucks at the moment you know maybe one day uh, but you know it's not about that it's about having your health and well-being you know and and spending time now more time with family and doing things you enjoy, you know, and, and sometimes something's got to give. Yeah. Um, and we've already mentioned, you know, the top parts of your rung of your ladder is, y y you know, your health and happiness. So okay. finance, you need money. Don't get me wrong. You do need money to survive. It makes life better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's been many guests that I've had on that have said when they've been at their absolute bottom in the pits, like finance is usually an underlying worry too. Yeah. And I know my mum and dad, when they were rowing, Guess what they were rowing about? Yeah, money. money. Yeah, because it was such a stress. Yeah. So I know it doesn't make you happy, but I think it can eliminate a lot of stress too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's helpful. But do you need, you know, the millions? Well, what is it they say? Is it they say after forty thousand or something pounds, or maybe it's seventy? I'm, I'm kind of guessing it. But basically, they put a number on it that says at, once you surpass that, yeah, it doesn't actually make the quality of your life that much better. Oh, interesting. You know, mm. because at 70,000, you, you have all the food that you need, you are clothed, you can pay your mortgage, you can have nice holidays, Yeah. you can get a lease on a car. It's like, after that, you just get a lease on a bigger car, you buy more expensive. Do you know what I mean? You, yeah. you, things well, don't change go. dramatically. You there still we... have to work. Yeah. And so. I think that's a key thing as well. Even even your millionaires and stuff, you know, and not, you need a sense of purpose in your life, and uh -huh. it's got to be something productive. You know, 
I do my classroom training my coaching and all the other bits and bobs uh but i still need my adrenaline rush you know and i i'm still going out into the polar extremes i'm still pushing myself you know i'm off to greenland in march to uh nice. you know i'm supporting uh the polar academy actually and uh and that's for young um children who are struggling with their mental health and oh, whatever and we're just p- promoting building their resiliency and the final part is to go out to greenland and uh so I'm going to be there, you know, it's going to wake me up as well. And I need that and I enjoy it. And it's rewarding that volunteering, you know. It's, How old are the kids? Kind of um, I think they're like 16, 17, around that oh, age. Yeah. But they've had a it's tough... Too old. Oh, yeah. I love to go to Greenland. I did Iceland. Yeah. And that's just a short flight to Greenland. It's a big yeah. old place, Greenland, isn't it? Uh, it's not as big as... It's big. Yeah. I mean, it's bigger than Iceland, that's for sure. Oh, you yeah, know? it's yeah. quite, quite but, significantly. Um, you know, it's, it's been a big effect- ice cap, right? Or it well, was. that's yeah. the interesting thing. I mean, when we were there last year, it's, it's, it's pissing down most of the time, you know. Oh. And uh, so there is definitely, you know, we say this climate, it's in my book and stuff. It's it's happening around us. Yeah. We're just quite blinkered with what's happening yeah. around us. Uh, but there, you know, I'm off to Himalayas as well, you know, uh, with Mark. And it's just getting out. You need your own adrenaline fix. I call it your head, heart, hand, you know on a day-to-day basis which for me is is my exercise and stuff sure um but have something also what about if you become sick or ill what gives you that sense of achievement pride is there something at home or if you become ill or sick as well so we need both i think but also i I like my adrenaline and if you speak to most dare say maybe special forces guys they're, they're doing something mad you know maybe parachuting or free falling or yeah doing something because they still put in we need that that kick of course yeah and this kind of goes back to what we originally kicked off with it it in my head it must be a hard transition from doing these exciting adrenaline kind of fueled missions to coming back to uh, i guess you would call this is this what you would do you call this normality or is, uh, the, or is the old way of life normality and this is fucking crazy shit well, you look around man it's insane people are crazy it's just adjusting to this um, yeah this world, this crazy world we're living in, it's, 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 it's bizarre, you know, and it's sometimes it's frustrating, you know, I, I, when I was serving, you know, I'd, I'd be on operations, come back from a really hot, maybe deserty place, and then as you fly, you just see the gra- green grass of, you know, England, you think I'm home, and then you, you kind of go in to go and buy, you know, shopping really frustrates me, yeah. going to, you know, and I've got my basket, of, and there's a big queue, and it's just like, oh. All the X-Forces guys say that. Yeah. It's about supermarkets that drive them to, to yeah. like fucking breakdown. It, yeah, it, it creates stress, you well, know what I mean? One of, the, one of the guys said that he saw, like, somebody debating with his partner which meal to have, and he's <laughs> like, like, and only, like, three weeks ago, he was deciding yeah. whether to kill this guy or not, or whether, yeah. you know, to, to set, and it's like, shit, yeah. Yeah, this is, it's a huge change, and it's, and that's why it can be difficult to transition for some people to adjust to to that. But like I said, for myself, I was lucky 10 years. I was building and getting to know the audience and adjusting my style, and it helped me. Mm. You know? Do they teach you certain skills? Like, I know this is a weird question to ask, but this is just on my mind. You know when it comes to taking another person's life mm. in a mission that requires that? Yeah. Do they specifically do any like psychological training on what that feels like or do they just tell you how to sh- aim a gun and fire it's an interesting concept to be honest because um because you've been put under stress aren't you that yeah. stress is an emergency response to a threat and the threat is the you know the enemy whatever it is and uh, but very clever you know especially in the military and the special forces you know you you're there you'll do progressive training you'll start on the ranges uh, then you'll go inside a you know a building. Then it then it turns dark. Then there's smoke or whatever, and then there's a hostage. You know that type. So they build you up, but nothing quite builds you up for someone shooting back in a real. Yeah. You know how do you prepare for that? Um, so good training and prepare and and drills prepare you. And, and then for myself, face with the enemy, literally you know not too far away. What what do I do? Well, it's, it becomes an instinctive reaction. My first baptism of fire, sadly, um, someone came up in front of me, the enemy, and, and I had a stoppage in my weapon, you know, and, and the, they click and no, and they're shooting at me. What do you do? But luckily, you know, I had that pause, that, that freeze moment. You hear about, you know, freeze flight uh, fight. I had the freeze for about nine seconds, confusion. 
but the drills kicked in boom boom and mm. next thing my, you know my weapon was running and um you know the, the flight kicked in the adrenaline and then the fight and luckily you know i i got out of that one uh that is a sign of good training mm. so does does the it's the first kill the one that like you almost have to get over like do, do things become a little bit simpler then or does it is the feeling the same each time or is it situation dependent well, i mean I, I don't really want to talk about too too, too much about sure. you know death and destruction it was my job yeah to go in and, and deal with people who are nasty you know and and terrorists and things like that and i, I had to do that job so it's coming to terms i mean i'm i'm totally you know i've got no problems people think that you know military are, are scarred and and stuff you know that there's those values that have been placed on the military when they come out that they've all got ptsd and things like that well we, we haven't you know what i mean it's coming to terms with it the values have been placed on the films the rambos and the those films out there that people think that we are mm. you know, but we've been trained highly for those situations and coming to terms with them don't get me wrong you know some in some occasions people struggle and it's a traumatic event isn't it you know and it's what you perceive as a traumatic event and then dealing with it afterwards sometime afterwards that's ptsd in a nutshell but i i'm i'm comfortable with what i've had to do in myself once again put my hand on my heart and i've had to do so yeah yeah well, and i think I, that's super important what you're just saying like mm. you feel like you've you've done the right thing right and yeah. it, and the reason i ask it was there was a, there was a girl upstairs and you know she said who, who's the guest oh, today and i said okay. Paul, Paul Vickery, is yeah. the, this is who he is. And she was like, wow. She was like, C -c you know, can you speak to him about this and ask him how like, you know, how he deals with it? Can he oh, sleep? Okay. And, and I didn't think to ask you that because uh, again, for me, it's your job and like, we need people like you to do those jobs that yeah. the average person wouldn't do. Yeah. So I think I find it really weird when people kind of like take big issue with that you can do that uh, but i'm like they're the people that we would need to keep us safe when yeah. shit hits the fan yeah and it is it's a job but yeah. it's an admiral but, but i think it's easier just to to turn a blind eye to all this stuff and assume that we don't we wouldn't be capable of that and i, I, th I think we're all capable yeah it's how you train channel yeah it comes down to training once again i'll mention it again preparation yeah um you know and building yourself up for those stressful but sometimes we are thrown into very stressful and it happens you know but you're right you know we're there as the backstop if the shit hits the fan you know who are you going to call for you know it's not ghostbusters that's for sure yeah. you know we, we'll be there and we need to be trained to prevent those horrible people doing horrible things yeah absolutely and this is why i'm all in full support of the police being trained at higher levels and being able to use force too it's like because they do deal with so much shit like so much on a daily basis i don't think people can to understand how difficult that kind of job is when you're dealing with that all the time every day yeah i used to teach a lady she used to do the uh, the, the pedophilia um cases mm. for for the police force and i think they had a rule that you could only do it for 10 years at that point yeah because uh, you know you're viewing images horrific images yeah. day after day yeah. after day and they said there's only so long you can do that whether the military and the police force are the same but i can only think that after a while it would it would have its impact it's you know we're, we're all humans right yeah there's exactly. only so much shit yeah. you can take yeah so and you don't know how you're going to react ultimately. you don't do you, you know no. at the end of the day but you'd like to think with all the training uh but it's what you've been exposed to and what you're facing you know the paramedics you know i come from the paramedic fraternity as well you know and and mm. what you're exposed you don't know what you're going to get faced with on a day-to-day -day basis mm. and it's pretty horrific you know and then then they go to the next job and then it happens again and they're exposed to it again and again so no wonder you know we may struggle uh individually to come to terms with with what we see and witness yeah and what what jumps out to me is like how difficult it must make everyday life outside of the job so when like say people are debating things that are quite frankly pointless or talking about things that are irrelevant and you, and you see yeah. the real shit that's happening like people dying yeah you know people planning to fucking kill people all that stuff and then yeah you go like say you go supermarket shopping <laughs> and you've got to decide whether to have low fat coleslaw or sweet corn for dinner yeah. that's like, do you know what I mean? yeah but hey that's life isn't it, it? Is. And it it's is. adjusting and, and it's i think uh, uh, it's great to be able to adjust you know and uh it, it, it's warming that you can adjust and be 
you know, we take strength from that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for us all, isn't it's it? It's upsetting too. I don't know why it upsets me, but I just even from the the manual laborers of the world in in England and and where wherever they do their work, it's like they don't always seem to get the respect and um, admiration that they deserve. Mm. Mm. And, and maybe you don't feel like you should, or maybe it's not a big deal to you. But I think like even the guys that collect my bins, they're out there. They're out there every fucking morning at yeah. four thirty. Probably not because they want to, but because they got kids to feed. And yeah. I'm like, that's admirable. Yeah, it is. And I look at people, the paramedics, police, army. And I'm like, they're brave people. And I, I don't think, and the nurses and mm. the people that do those jobs. I'm like, yeah. do we really kind of slow down enough to to be grateful and respect them and to to, to even say to them thank you? Yeah. Uh, I remember saying to the bin man once, like, and I, can I say bin man? Is that even a thing now? <laughs> you know what I said? I just said thank you for, for keeping the streets clean. And he looked yeah. at me as if he'd never ever heard anything of that. Yeah. I thought, well, a bit of empathy hasn't. there, isn't it? Yeah. You know? And I'm just saying thank you. It doesn't take much, does it? You know? I don't think so. No, I think. But I respect them. I really do. Exactly. And I, I think what we've traveled through with, you know, say the COVID, you know, um, that should have, you know, sent a message home. But I think we've just carried on. Yeah. You know, and, and we've, you know, because then we realised fully, didn't we, the, the postman, you know, that the shops, how important they are for us and the people working in there, yeah, like you said. But hang on, we'll just carry on now as we I used know. to, you know, know. So let's not forget those people out there and, and say our thank yous, you know. Well, go, yeah, God, you've reminded me of um, that time in COVID where it felt like we'd made this big U-turn, you know, people were standing out clapping for the nurses. Yeah. Fucking hell, that feels like a distant memory, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolute distant memory. I thought this yeah. is a turning point for us as a nation. I thought we're all going to look after each other more yeah. and be kinder. And I'm like, I don't think we are, to be honest. Yeah, and I, th I think that's, I mean, some of the stuff I do, you know, in my workshops in particular, you know, I get people to maybe have a quick reflect. What did they learn from, you know, that time in COVID? Because I think we forget, you know, the power of nature uh, and enjoying uh, and being grateful for those people the bin men and yeah. you know yeah. and, and we but we've just come off this wave haven't we and we've now into another wave and it's it's pretty doom and gloomy to be honest and like yeah. i said i go back to control the controllable and you know learn let's learn from what we've gone through as, in this journey and 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 build our containers what were your main kind of lessons then on reflection from the the lockdown situation uh, routine. I mean, I was spending um, me and my wife. I, I I exercise in my backyard. I call it the prison yard. Okay. And I had my slam ball. <laughs> and, fun, and, man. Yeah, yeah. The slam ball, yeah. the TRX, and all that. Oh, and all the good uh, stuff, yeah. we did good sessions in the in the back. You know, yeah. we kept that going. We enjoyed it. And then we, when we were allowed out, we went to like a local local rundown tennis court. Yeah. And we do. The kids would go around on their roller skates while we're doing our. Um, you know fitness sessions you know on each line shuttle sprints and that really gave us a buzz things to look forward to and we all had our ways of coping that was one for us um and just spending time with the family you know and, and puzzles and realizing we'll get through this you yeah. know but it was pretty heartbreaking you know hearing the stats you know the the, the death stats what's that all about you know yeah. and wow i mean it was it was tough time even for for, for me you know and you know, my, my family are now settled in Germany, you know, and uh, okay. I travel, I work in England and I travel over to, to Germany during my family. And, uh, uh, but during that period when we were coming through COVID, it's the longest time I spent seven months in here in the UK without my family. Oh, wow. Whereas okay. in the military, I never had six months was norm, the normal, yeah. but seven months because of COVID, I didn't wow. go to see my family. So wow, that's that, crazy. Was, that was a lesson learn and, and yeah. that's when routine had to kick in at home on my own training so you were on your own during yeah that time, music yeah. is quite powerful you know it's yeah. a very powerful motivator for me as well yeah yeah i live on my own and the first lockdown because uh, uh, i owned a gym at the time so i was able to go and train mm. and i did that for a few sessions and i thought you know what no i want to i want to get in the mix with everyone and tr i want to just take home a few dumbbells and and train in my garden yeah. you know what i mean just yeah, stuff like yeah. that to, to, yeah to get involved and also, I didn't want, I kind of, a sick part of me didn't want people going, well, it's all right for you, Alex, you've got a gym. So I thought, right, fuck it. Well, let's just grab two or three pieces of kit. Yeah, do it at home. Press ups, yeah. all that. Yeah, and I thought, I'll do it at home. I treated it like a prison camp yeah. for seven months or however long it was. On my yeah. own, every day, trained, and I got into fucking great shape. Yeah. I quite I, liked it, yeah. I used to enjoy it, quite therapeutic, you know, writing yeah. your session down, yeah. what you're going to do. Yeah. You know, oh, I'll do a bit of this and a bit <laughs> of that. But 
you t- you know, your, your mind's saying, oh, no, that's too hard, yeah. you know, but then you change it and, no, fight the, the demons and have a good session. And Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, if we're talking about lessons and reflection and stuff, I really learned the importance of resilience during that time. I, I kind of mm. felt like I'd done the groundwork, so I was able to deal with it. Mm. And that was really important because I thought you could crumble here. Yeah. You could do the wrong things. You could drink on the first week of lockdown because it's lockdown and then, mm, are you drinking on? Do you know what I mean? I thought yeah. from day one, I thought, nope start as you mean to go on that's something i look back on with a bit of pride but that's what we saw across the nation sadly people i think we all might have just delved into a bit of alcohol you know the shelves were empty and then you saw a bit of a trend back up didn't you that yeah. all of a sudden all the the slam balls and the kettlebells were you know and the, and the rows and the pelotons were getting bought yeah you know and, and people turn and realize actually alcohol isn't the way it's sort of coping here otherwise i'm going to end up in a bad place yeah and uh they pick themselves back up well most people you know most people i yeah. think that, that i need to work on that empathy side um because i got frustrated when i saw that people weren't attacking it in the right way i'm like this is an opportunity yeah don't waste it and uh yeah some people did and again you, but you don't know what people are going through i know it's no. it's easy to to think from your own mindset yeah and that, again, it's guilty of me as a coach. I always think everyone should think like I do, and uh, they don't. And, and that's they the sh- thing. And they shouldn't. Yeah, you know. and that's the thing. We can't we can't control people. No. We can influence people, and that's what it all comes down to. Yeah. You know, is influencing people to look after themselves more. It yeah. goes back to where we kind of started. So, what made you transition into doing what you're doing now? So, what was the what was the angle into mental health, working with the kids? Yeah, yeah. So, um, like I said above the iceberg with the physical paramedic medical training and i saw that was a, a a need and it was well received and i thought hang on but i was quite judgmental to be honest you know i used to drive a, an ambulance as well you know in my spare time okay. as well as still working and uh, yeah doing bits and bobs uh but i'd pick people up you know and i'd see an intoxicated person who i call them tox not drunk intox- and i'd think they're going to be sick in my vehicle oh i've got to clean it out but I wasn't actually thinking about why is this person like this? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we need to just, I think, look at people on the streets and, you know, we see people who are homeless. There's a reason why that person's homeless. You know what I mean? So my mindset changed. And I, then I volunteered and I supported a, a local organization who do some great things on the streets. And I supported them. And, and that's when my training came in and I realized the power of, of men, uh, looking after our mental, the bit below the iceberg, that's where it is. And I used to do a lot of resiliency talks on, um, in the regiment um, to prepare guys for selection because you fight your demons. So I do a bit of that. So I, I love all the whole mental resilience, cognitive thinking and the power of the mind. And then I, I also realized mental health is a space. This was back in you know 2017, 18. I was, that's when I'm a business self-employed doing mainly medical training. That's when I turned it into another arm of my business into mental health. Yeah. Uh, and it turned a limit, limited company, Excalibur Mental Health. And yeah, it's an, it, it, at the right time, right place, really. Yeah. I think it's sometimes easier to have uh, empathy for the homeless people. I know I have lots. That I think that's why I get frustrated with these guys in the middle that probably have got more opportunity to mm-hmm. live a better life and they don't take it. Because I'm like, clearly, if you're sleeping on the streets, man, like, shit, things have gone sour. Mm. Maybe you, hope you maybe you've had a shit draw in life, a shit start. Parents didn't give a fuck. Maybe mm. you're an alcoholic. Maybe you've got a drug addiction. Maybe you, you've got mental health issues. Yeah, you know you don't choose to live on the streets, right? Like I don't care what people say. It's like p- people can end up in shit places. Yeah, that's why I think if you have got the opportunity in life, like you have got the people around you that can that can support you and encourage you, like you've got you've got to jump on it. Yeah, because there are people that are uh, not so fortunate. No, and and, and people have, sh- you know, shit times throughout, and and things happen for a reason or not reason, you know. And then you turn to unhealthy habits, and it's a vicious cycle. And then next thing, you know, you could be on the streets, and and yeah, it's 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 tough, you know. And yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's a wow. disconnect between um a lot of these th- like you, you know when you see a homeless person like, I, I kind of am well aware that it that could be me 
Yeah. So my mum and dad get killed in a fucking car crash tomorrow. Who yeah. knows how I'll handle it? Yeah. Who knows? You might have a fucking breakdown. I've seen grown men have breakdowns when their parents yeah. die or when their kids die. Yeah. You know, I had a guy on the podcast. He lost both his kids. Yeah. And it's like, I can see why people would lose. Yeah. You know, if you if the reason you live is for your kids and then your kids die, it's like, yeah. wow, it's terrible. It's horrible what happens. We are all at risk, and you know, maybe yeah. some higher than others. Don't get me wrong, you know. And we're we're in this cost of living crisis as well, you know. Mm. And it's it's worrying, you know. I mean, so we're all in the. We could all, you know, as we would say, not to, you know, one bullet away as such from yep. from a, a shit situation, I suppose. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, and I guess that's for guys like us. That's a good driver to try and work on our own game, and then spread the the the, the, the work that we do, right? And try and yeah help guys develop tougher mindsets yeah. because it's it's potentially life-saving you know knowing how to handle setbacks and adversity can save your life well i really think prevention is cure mm. you know and, and prevention is looking after yourself you know it goes back to sadly you know it does get out of hand sometimes and you do need that professional help and support but yeah. try and look after your team as well keep an eye on your team keep an eye on your mucker your family mm. yeah. you know and and uh, you know as we say, you know, it's okay to be okay, you know, and just put your hand up, like I, I, I have done, yeah, a few times, yeah. So what's next for for you then, uh, in terms of the world of adventuring? I mean, we haven't really spoke too much about the the South no. Pole trek, yeah. So we can touch on that, but in terms of of yeah, future goals and plans for you and with the business too, what yeah, what does it look like? Well, it's busy, busy, you know, and I, I've 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 let the the regiment go now, which has given me a bit of a breathing space because okay. sometimes I was just juggling too much. Yeah. So my focus on the business is growing the business, is trying to get put my head up there and say, look, I'm here as you're hearing now, you know, and some of the good work that I'm doing. So drive the business, but also have some fun yeah. as well. So like I said, I'm off to Greenland, Himalayas. Going to grow that a bit as well. Hopefully, the Himalayas piece. There may be another expedition in me, but these expeditions, you know, they take years of planning uh, and then you've got to get the funding and it, it, it's draining. Yeah. You know? And then the book I've written, that, that took five years. Yeah, I can believe you know? it. I, I can believe that very much. Yeah. yeah and I, I, So, yeah, I mean, there's, there, there might, might be another book in me as well. You never sure. know. So um, we'll wait and see. But at the moment, it's just keeping things going, growing the business and helping people because... When I stepped into my business, my mental health business, I didn't realize the power of what I'm delivering um, in that I thought it's more about promoting a positive mental health culture, which it is within businesses, but actually it's saving lives. Mm. And I've been saving several lives now as a business, you know, and, and that's really warmed me to keep going and, you know, keep doing it. I like that on your website, by the way, at the bottom, it's got like the number of la lives oh, yeah. saved, the number of. Uh, people we've worked with I, th I thought that was really mm. really cool I know Mark's doing the self poll soon and yeah. uh, I've tried to jump on but I don't think he was having any of it to be honest well, he's, he's, no it's not south it's north oh is he doing yeah, north 100 yeah. days on ice he is yeah. yeah I was like can I jump in and uh, yeah I don't, I, don't, I don't think he was that keen to be honest I'm not sure he likes me that much to spend well, 100 days with me we had a good me. chat you know last night and I think you know it's actually quite nice once again to get out into an environment on your own and fight your own demons yeah. and have some space from all this noise we've just been hearing yeah and get out and enjoy i mean i wouldn't force yourself to have 100 days on ice but yeah but it's yeah. appealing yeah. again i kind of know that yeah. it will suck uh, but i know there'll be such such benefits and rewards from it yeah. even if i hated it it's kind of like you're not going to come back from that not learning something about yourself yeah simple like that's why it's okay for it to suck and be something you hate i'm like good yeah so i mean you'll learn a lot yeah exactly and we're, once again it goes back to being uncomfortable yeah in you know get yourself out of your comfortable situations and go uncomfortable and and, and you learn something you might yeah. just learn something or are you just happy to be comfortable but like i said the clock's ticking you know and and that life journey yeah is will come to an end i know, you know i don't want to doom and gloom it's here, not doom and gloom i think it's worth hammering home there paul yeah and and put your hand on your heart and say i did the best i could on this time on the planet yeah you know and so there's more in me uh watch this space i would say yeah i love it well i love yeah. that you know what you stand for man i love that motto i think it's great i think it's someone everyone everyone can live by that yeah. um so we have a traditional better man question um uh -oh. yeah i know danger <laughs> so what do you need to work on now as an individual to become a, a better man that's interesting Ooh. 
That is a deep. I better save the best questions to the oh, end. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I got thrown a question the other day, actually, you know, and, and, and it, it, it struck a chord with me is, um, you know, I do these expeditions and things like that. And, uh, and my partner stood beside me, you know, throughout my military career, the crazy expeditions I've been on. And I think it's payback, you know what I mean? And we need to pay back, sure. you know, time, um, time with family, time with my wife, you know, and, and I think that's really important. So I think that someone says, you know, is it not selfish what you're doing? Well, we do some selfish things, but if you're having the support of your team and family to help you. So I think devote try and devote more time that way i mean time is time like i said is ticking but we can manage our own time and i think allocating a bit more time even though my family's in germany as i speak you know i'm going back there shortly and spend as much time and then i'm back again but i think it's important so building me i think yeah so time devoted to family is important um and just building, the more I do, you know, my mental health, the more I talk, the more I'm, I'm coaching, the more I'm learning as well, you sure. know, and I think you're, you're the same with Always. all these podcasts. Is, is School day every day, mate. Yeah. Every day. And I, I think just learning some of these things and it's raising my awareness more and more to look after myself better. You know, last year I, I, I also worked for Health Heroes. Um, I, I'm a kind of case manager part-time, yeah. Um, so I'm juggling that, but I started to play football last year, you know, and I've got two left feet, but uh, that's helped me, you know, something new. I've done something new. And this year, you know, I, I went, I'm into yoga. Yep. So I'm doing yoga, but I did it a few years ago. I loved it, but I just kind of gave it up. So I'm trying to get that. So it's about looking after myself. I'm seeing a nutritionist, you know, uh, as well. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit of a checkup, make sure I'm on the right. So it's, I think it's about looking after me, it goes back to that again is is looking after me so i can look after my team absolutely it makes total sense mm. how old are you do you mind me asking can i ask how old are uh, you <laughs> oh, not, i'm not playing that <laughs> <No. now. laughs> uh 52 53 yeah. this year and it's, it's really yeah. common that guys around that age from the guys that i've learned from they have similar themes of like it is time to give back to my family now yeah. But I think there's there's a really good argument of like, uh, you know, I know some guys that will be home every night. It uh, doesn't mean they're there though, you know? You can be on your phone, you can yeah. be emailing. So I think there's a good argument to be like, you know, I think it's good for a kid to, to see dad going out and traveling the world and doing it. I personally think so. It, it cuts them up, to be honest. It, it, I mean, they're, they're young and it does sure. hurt me going away. I'm sure it does. And yeah. it has throughout my, my, it hurts me every time I go yeah. away. Don't, I'm only human and, and those of emotions of saying goodbyes, is, it's bloody hard, you know. But yeah, I, maybe there is that element of, yeah, dad's going off. It's, it, it's well, funny because a lot of where my family live in Germany, what I'm doing is seen as, oh, that's unheard of. We don't, you know, we spend time with our families here. We're always with our family. Yeah, I get that. But they're not quite, like you said, with the family. Yeah, I don't think that earns necessarily a, a badge of honour, the fact that you're just at home. Yeah. I, think, I think there's more to it than that. And yeah. again, there's no right or wrong to this, but I would look at the CVs of a, a, a guy that's at home every night watching the TV. And again, nothing wrong with that because, yeah. you know, that could be great to have dad around every night. Yeah. Or... You go, my dad is legit, you know, he's done 35 years in this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, well, that's a wrong... And men make these sacrifices. Yeah. This is this is what's worth talking about too. Men do make huge sacrifices yeah. for themselves, for their family, for the country. And it's, you know, it's tough. But that's why it's so admirable because you have to... This is what admiration is, somebody who can step away from that and do this. Mm. It's interesting. I mean, I, I've literally bitten the bullet on behalf of my family. You know, I'm I'm still working a way of getting to join my family, but they're out there. I know they're safe. I know they're happy. You know, and and they're they're having a good good life out yeah. there. You know, but I've been the bullets on this for the sake of the family. So yeah, it's, cool. it's, it's difficult. Mm. That was awesome. Uh, okay. How did how did you find <laughs> stepping into the world of? Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's like I said, it's my second podcast. So hopefully, it was you know good for the listeners and people watching um well, i've been the honest yeah i've been honest truthful that's that's who i am and that's hopefully how it's come across so thanks good. for those listeners
Cool. Well, thanks for, okay. for being on. It's good to meet you. Yeah, likewise. It's, like, it's good, good to, to meet a guy with a good handshake as well. <laughs> I hate the wet, wet lettuce handshakes. Oh, yeah. I'm Imagine like, that oh. at the end. That would be. I know, it's yeah. shit, isn't it? Yeah. But little things like that. I'm like, again, military army guys, you never yeah. get a wet lettuce yeah. handshake. No. Straight away, first thing, you meet a guy, he looks you in the eye and says, hello, good handshake. I'm already on my. Although it's... it's getting hot in here, isn't it? So it is getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those little things, I'm like, we can teach men that. Yeah. It's doable for everyone. Good yeah. handshake, look in the eye. Yeah, it's important. I think so. Body language. Paul, thank yeah. you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Cool.